Okay, so the goal of today is uh, to do a sample exercise for starting to creating a, a, a bit at least of the uh, plan for usability testing um, of a specific application. So this will not be the entire document well formatted and perfect and complete for a usability testing plan, but let's try to put together in this document the main parts at least uh, some of these maybe in a quicker way and other things in a little bit slower way. And so more in depth, uh, just to better understand how to do this plan. And we are using Discord for, for this example. So uh, it seems to me that you have a pretty good, maybe not only, not only, not of, not of you, not all of you, but many of you or some of you has a pretty good experience with Discord. So they, you know you are, say, expert of the, of the application. Um, the application is also quite big and uh, has a lot of function and a lot of, a lot of different things that could be, could be done. And so this is maybe not ideal for, uh, uh, it's not similar, very similar, to, it's not very similar to the usability testing that you plan to do for your prototype that are way more smaller and, and that they are smaller and more with less goals and less tasks, less, less things to do. But it give you, give you an idea of, just to, give, to have a, a shared knowledge and a shared application. And probably an application that you know better than me. So we can really reason about, especially about tasks because you have in, probably in some way to, uh, to inform me about which are the main tasks of Discord. So we are going to use Discord. I open here Discord. Um, yes, whatever. Um, uh, basically, it's quite empty. It's just logged in and open the application. Uh, you see here I have um, a channel that is that was a, chat, a, a server in the terminology of of, um, of Discord that is the server uh, of a conference that I joined this year remotely. So I use Discord basically for this conference and for three hours in three days, something similar of this. So just to give you an idea. So I'm not absolutely an expert of Discord. I just was a casual user and but we can reason about this. So today will be obviously really interactive as, as a lecture, as an exercise, because we need to reason together. Otherwise, it's, it's enough if we open an example and say, okay, this is the example, follow this. Uh, in this document, there are also three links. Two of them, these last two, are also reported in the slides. And this, these are these two. Uh, one is this, uh, turn user goes into task scenario. Uh, that is quite nice because it show you some properties of task that could be used for uh, usability testing. Uh, starting from a goal, like browse, browse product offering and purchase an item, and a version, a poor version of the task starting from this goal and a better version of this task. So you see, task we have said that should be uh, concrete and quite precise. And so a poor task is purchase a pair of orange Nike running shoes. And a better task is buy a pair of shoes, uh, or shoes for less than $40. Probably here it's a better task this uh, because uh, we have this specification about money. So you can uh, browse the offering and purchase an item with some specific uh, indication, not orange. Orange could be maybe just one pair of shoes. It could be multiple pair of shoes. It could be maybe a sh uh, shoes which uh, they have some part that are orange and other part that are other colors. So it's difficult to say, okay, this task is completely successfully completed. Maybe just partially because it's quite big here. Instead here it's buy a pair of shoes for less than $40, any, we don't care about the color because it's just a visual attribute of the shoes, but we care about the specific attribute of this, uh, 
with this money. And this is realistic. It's more realistic to say, I would like to buy a, a pair of shoes that cost this amount of money uh, with respect to say, we would like to buy a, a pair of shoes that is that are orange or any other color, even it can happen. Then also make the task actionable. So if the user goal is find the movie and show time, the better task, the, the, the version of better task is use a website, maybe the website that you are testing for usability, uh, to find a movie you would be interested in seeing on Sunday afternoon. Again, there is a specific time, Sunday afternoon, that is uh, for a movie, and there is an indication of which website you have to do, and the action, find a movie you would be interested in seeing on Sunday afternoon among the various options for Sunday. The poor task is we want, you want to see a movie Sunday afternoon, go to Fandango and tell me where you click next. This is not really actionable because you are say you are asking for for the user where is where you are going to click, not to complete the the action per se. So this is a better task because you are actually find a movie uh, on Saturday afternoon and telling the evaluator, okay, I found this and this is the movie that I would like to see. And third, and there are just three of this title, avoiding, avoid giving clue and describing the step. So don't say, go on the website, sign in, click on the button on the top left or click on browse and then do the action. But a task like uh, look up for grades is look up for the results of your my term exam. So specific, concrete, not just any exam, the my term exam in particular, or in our, let's say, uh, uh, structure, organization, it's the result of a specific course uh, in a specific session, the winter session, the first exam of the winter session for the HCI course. Don't uh, go to the website, sign in and tell me where you click to get your transcript. So actionable, avoid giving clues, avoid describing the step that the user is going to, to do. Go to the website, sign in, click there, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So without clue, without describing the step, actionable and realistic, something that people can say, okay, I, I would do a task similar to this also in my real life. And this is one of the link that you can, can read. And it's about also giving a little bit of scenarios so con context perspective to the task, not just do this, but try to contextualize a bit the, the task. And the other one is this example of a script that we can briefly have a look. We, we will not be able to, to write an entire script today. But this is what a script, just, just the description that the facilitator is going to, uh, to read and to, to know for the evaluation. So there is uh, some, so in the beginning, there are some main points like, okay, which is the purpose of this study? Is testing website? Uh, remember to say that we are testing the website, we are testing the product, we are testing the interface, not the participant. And remember to say that we are recording you, in this case, they are recording people, and remember to complete the profile. So these are something that are for the notes for the facilitator, things to remember, things to do that are really important. Uh, then uh, for the testing introduction, Remember to say that the test is uh, 25 minutes long uh, and other details and to, to ask if the participant has any question before actually starting the test. Maybe there are some curiosity that the participant will, would like to share. And then there is the script, the real script, with some indication again for the um, uh, facilitator, like start recording. So don't forget before doing this to press the recording. This is big, it's for the facilitator to, to remember. And then there are task one uh, and the actual task one here is not reported, but there will be a table somewhere in which is written task one, this is task one, and, and this is the matrix, the criteria and so on. Um, and this is the text that uh, the facilitator is going to say to the participant, I'm going to show you the page of website. You can look for a second only 
then it will ask you some question. At this stage, don't click anywhere, just look. And participants at this point look at the page for a few seconds, and then there are questions that the, uh, the facilitator is asking to the, um, the, the, the participant. So the, here you don't have a real task, it's just a first impression, quick look, just to get the impression of the user. And this is something that you can typically uh, can typically do. You can either introduce the user to uh, what he's going to do, or and or you can also um, tell the user just familiarize a bit with the interface and give me your first impression, what you think, um, where you will click for the first time for starting using these, which is the element that look uh, that, that catch your attention more than others. This is quite uh, useful for a website, for instance, uh, just to give some indication, additional indication. Uh, and then you have task, and then you have, so for instance, here you have another task that is that use thinking aloud. So just this task. Um, so for all the rest of the task after the first two, you are going to use think aloud. And oh, here you have the task. So the task, get the browser to home page, and the brief description of the task. And there is another free exploration task that in some cases could be useful. And then here from task five and so on, there are scenario tasks. Uh, finally, uh, for each task, there are some questions. So post the task question, and there is a post test questionnaire in the end that is summarized here. It's not the actual questionnaire that is provided to the participants, it's just a summary for the facilitator. So the script is something the facilitator knows and can read and there is another big stop recording because here the test is concluding and the facilitator has to remember to stop the recording otherwise we will record more and after there is thank you and the any debriefing session with the observer or just a review of the test with the observer without the participant so this is an example of a script and Uh, this is another example. This is this was not included in the slides, but it's another link that is in this document. This is quite nice uh, as a usability test plan. It's extremely structured, so probably too much structured. Uh, so while the other one that we have seen is quite not not a lot structured as a script, and there is only the script. Here you have an entire test plan. It is available on, on the internet with many points. So it starts from the results of an heuristic evaluation. It's include a description of a target user in general in the form of persona. It has all the questionnaire. It has a list of all the tasks, all the script, and it's very structured. Um, probably I was saying quite, quite too much structured, but it's, it's nice. It's a good example. It's a very good example. Uh, again, a bit structured. Probably most of the usability testing plan are not so structured in practice, but probably this should also be uh, public on the internet. So they uh, put a, a lot of effort in in also presenting the, this in a better way. But you see, more or less, you have the, the content. Uh, so well, the summary, if you want to skip it, and then you have the methodology. You see in the methodology, there are basically the points that we I've covered which are the number the number of participants and we are what are the who are the participants uh, how long is the session who the responsibility of the team that is conducting the uh, the usability if you have any artifacts any product any tool uh, which are the incentive if any that you give the participant you give money you give one grade more the exam probably not uh, what you give for incentivizing the participation, uh, scenarios and tasks, which methods you are going to use, uh, the environment and equipment, any timeline for doing all of these and results and various appendix like the pre-test questionnaire, the post-test questionnaire, the post-test questionnaire and so on. The, the, the video release, the knowledge that the participant is aware that uh, it, and it's agree, that uh, you are video recording the entire session 
the moderator script, so all the script similar to what we have seen before, and also uh, how they selected the target user in a very specific way. They are using a questionnaire for selecting the target population in this case. So this is very complete and very structured. Again, typically usability testing plan are less structured, but also they are not public on the internet. So this could be uh, a, way, a reason. So just give, let, let's give a, a, a quick scheme on of this. So this started with a summary. Okay, so basically they want to uh, investigate this website. It is a website for buying uh, books, uh, both new and not new. And there's also some um, uh, volunteering opportunities, some not-for-profit initiatives. So it's it's uh, it's like you know an Amazon for book, but for more for a sustainable and volunteering perspective, also for used book and so on. And they have three goals: uh, search and purchase books by ESBN author and title, uh, sell textbook through a specific program, and search for purchase and download an ebook. So these are the three specific goals that they have for this uh, usability uh, evaluation. Then the website could do a lot more, but they are just focusing on this three. They are interested in this three. Search, uh, purchase and download and uh, selling. Uh, here there is the, uh, a short description of the test, uh, the problem test uh, statement and the test objective. And here they have again the same three points made before with some more detail. Uh, and then they want to have people. Hmm? Uh, these are people that they would like to recruit. So this is quite similar. To this, hmm? if you remember, target group, how to select a target group, hmm? all these factors that you uh, used for the uh, interviews and observation, you can pose the same question also here, essentially. So who are your target user and which features, which characteristic they have? And the same apply here. You see they want people age 18 to 29, because this is the typical student, college student age. They are, uh, as a target user, college students. Uh, as for the education, they want people that have, that are students in a bachelor degree of a college, so you are not suitable for this study. Uh, for gender, they are trying to have a mix of various genders, and they use the computer daily for activities in addition to email and social media. So if you never use a computer, you cannot do this usability. You cannot be part of this usability uh, study. Uh, they shop online. They have purchase textbooks. They have never used this website before, and but they are purchasing ebooks or are interested in learning about ebooks. So this is the population that they are recruiting for uh, their usability study. The target population is college student, but then for the study, they are restricting and better specifying who is the target user and which characteristics they should have. Age, education, gender, usage of computers. So if you don't use the computer, you cannot be included in the study. Uh, you have to be shopped online at least once in your life. You have to be purchased textbook uh, or eBooks or interested in, but you have never used this website. So if you have already used the website, you cannot be part of, these, um, of the study. So this is quite specific, but well done a set of, um, characteristics that their target user should have. And they are recruiting these in you know, quite a very specific way again. Uh, it's, in, it's not always so common to find this document uh, well done, but uh, so this is the, the questionnaire that they use to recruit people. So they get a bunch of undergrad students and they say, okay, please feel, answer this question. Uh, first of all, you will be interested. Yes, we can proceed. No, you are auto self excluding yourself. Uh, is the English of the person understandable enough? If it's yes, you can proceed with other question. No, because the person is not speaking English well enough for the think aloud protocol, because probably some, some task will have the think aloud 
excluding the people. Then you are a college student, it's fine, everything is fine. If you're retired or homemaker, you cannot be part of the study a and so on. You are in this, in this age, a range of ages is fine, otherwise not, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And for other questions like this, uh, male and female, you don't have a clear condition of in the study or out the study, but you need mix. So uh, if you are recruiting, I don't know, five people that are male, um, you should focus more on recruiting female in this case, just to balance things up. Uh, when do you want to, to do the study? Um, if, if you are being online, one of the requirements is the user as a computer and shop online. So ask if you are online, if you've never been online in your life, you cannot be part of the study, even if all the previous questions are positive. And if your primary device for accessing the internet is the smartphone, you are excluding from the study because they want people that use it mainly for a computer. They are accepting their tablets in this case, but they could have also decided that tablets as smartphones should be condition for termination. And then there are other uh, question uh, that is interesting and they fit their own criteria for selecting target user. So first of all, deciding who, who the user are. Uh, and so you, they have an idea and they try to recruit people according to this criteria. And then uh, which are the goal of the study? Uh, which are the attributes of usability for their website. Uh, the website should be effective, efficient, error tolerant, engaging, and easy to learn. And they would like to have six participants, and then we'll have two backup people uh, to be recruited, just in case for any issue with these six. Uh, the session will be one hour. This is quite, uh, this is quite a lot. This is, let's say, between common and uh, a lot for a usability study, um, but they include everything. So the welcome and pretest questionnaire is 10 minutes. The tasks will be 40 minutes uh, in which they also have, we know, uh, some think aloud. So this time is obviously enlarged from this. And then there is also a post questionnaire, uh, post-test questionnaire and other investigation that they are planning for other 10 minutes. So a typical usability study lasts from 30 minutes to one hour, one hour and a half, where one hour and one hour and a half is in the upper range. It's difficult to find shorter usability evaluation. Then there is the role and the responsibility. So who is the facilitator and which are the responsibility? Okay, this is again, very structured. You don't need to, to write all this detail, but it's a great example of the, the process that they are following and what they have in mind. Uh, the artifact, what you need, you need uh, the questionnaire for screener, you need the script during the test, you need uh, some copies of the questionnaire, pre-test, post-test questionnaire, post-test questionnaire, and you need other things. Uh, they are paying $25 for each of the, of the users as an incentive. This is obviously a, uh, a way of incentivizing people to join the test because I, do you want to do this? Yes, I can give you $25. And this is maybe not a, a lot, but is for undergraduate students could be uh, a good incentives. And sometimes uh, you are not allowed to give money. So for instance, in Italy, we cannot pay people for doing this, this kind of thing, but we can, you can provide other presents, a small presence, uh, uh, technological presence or a keyboard, an agenda, uh, no, not a keyboard, uh, an agenda, um, a journal, something, a present, a keychain, or something like this. And then you have the task. Again, these tasks are organized in a section. You can organize task in section according to the main goal of the task. Like, okay, these are all tasks for creation. These are all tasks for selling. These are all tasks for buying. Uh, they are organizing the task according to scenarios. So they're telling people short stories. Uh, a friend suggests you to try the website uh, the next time. You decide to give it a look, like an introduction to the task. So they are creating the context, and then the task is review on page. This is a short version of the task. Obviously, this is, again, one of these exploratory tasks. Just have a look at the one page and 
tell me what you think and what you you want to do and we have five minutes to do this minimum uh, in estimated so just for reviewing the home page you have five minutes then there is the scenario you are required to purchase the book grammar girl uh, you want to find the, the cheapest copy available and the task the specific task that the user is going to do is search by sbn so this is provided in the task and place uh, and, and, and place the, the book in the cart for for actually um, uh, buying the, the product and then you again you have a long scenario here and some task here so these tasks are not well structured so probably they are not the task that are given to to the user uh, so probably there is not search by sbn as a specific task but it's the the mix of the scenario plus the specific task that make the uh, the entire task. So here it's depicted in this way. And here you have the task with the time and then optional task at the end, uh, etc. Then what they are interested in uh, understanding the time to, to measure, the time to complete the task, the number of user able to complete each task, the number of attempts required to complete tasks. So they are allowing people to do the task more than one time if they want. Again, it's an option. You can do one task, either it's completed or not, and they say, okay, fine. Or you say, or say, okay, this task should last five minutes. And after five minutes, six minutes, you stop the user and say, okay, you say, okay, next task and task is failed. Or you can give user more time because you want to see if eventually the, the user will complete the task and have a very long time, like, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, after which saying, okay, stop it because it's you are wasting too much time and we need to proceed and we cannot stay one hour on this task. Obviously, you are not able, the task is not completed. It's not possible to complete the task right now. And then obviously all the results from the questionnaire and the post-test evaluation will be used, they, use, they are using SUS. And then there are also qualitative comments like the comments, the question, they are also measuring body language and so on. Then there is a description of the equipment, again, very structured uh, as, a, as, as a usability testing and the timeline. When there is the pilot, which are the testing date, who is going in each date. So participant number one will be on March 30 from nine to 10. And then there is a break of 15 minutes and then we, they will have participant number two. And then maybe in another day, they have another participant and so on. They may have another participant and so on. And any deliverables that they need to, to give to, to the sponsor, probably to the person that is saying, okay, please do this uh, evaluation for me. Some references. And in the end, this is quite common, a series of appendix like the screener that we have seen before. And, but also most importantly, the script. So you see the script there, again, as some indication for the facilitator, the moderator, and the text that the moderator is uh, reading or basically is reading. Is You can also rephrase a, a little bit by learning it by, by memory, especially the, the, maybe, maybe the, the welcoming part, the introductory part, but uh, often they read the test. So say, hello, the name, my name is, name of the facilitator, uh, and I'm a part of team uh, or company. And then welcome the participants just to uh, make the user feel comfortable. Then state the purpose of the study. Uh, here is the test, the text for saying what is the study about. The te some task, all the tasks will be uh, using the thinking aloud. And so here is the description, the thinking aloud, Pro then provide the forms for uh, informed consent and so on. And then the, the pre-test questionnaire and there is the description. So they are ending out the questionnaire, uh, describe the equipment, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They the start the study. And you see here the test typically, the text, this is quite typical, differently from before, the script ends with the first task. Because when the study start, you have the task, you have the description and you are going just to say the description of the task up to the end. And then sometimes the script restart after all the tasks. So here start the study, uh, we can begin. Here typically you have task 
one to ten, and then conclusion and other word that the user is the moderator can say to the participant uh, toward the end of the task, like this is the post questionnaire, the post test questionnaire, and something similar to this. But obviously, the most important thing, uh, the most important part is the beginning when you set the tone and give clear instruction uh, to the participants about the uh, testing and about the, the, the session, how it's work, uh, which information you are providing, uh, which are the tasks, how is going, uh, how much is long, and which is the website, the tool that you're going to use, and, and so on. Then there is, well, the permission form for the video release, uh, a pre-test questionnaire that is generic. They already screened the participant to recruit them so they know that if they are, in which age they are, if they are male or female and so on. So this is uh, more about how many textbooks you are purchasing online, just to understand if there are people that frequently buy things online. So target user, maybe a lot of target user for the website or people that don't buy a lot of textbooks online. Um, and similar question, and then you have a post-task questionnaire that is very similar to the, the first one, is very similar to the, uh, to the example that we have seen in the slides, and they also have a second open question for each task. So they, after each of the 10 tasks they have before, ask for each task these two questions. I thought, I thought the task was from very difficult to very easy and an open question about how the task could be made easier. Again, post-task questionnaire when they are present from one to three questions typically, and they have two, so it's, it's perfect. And, and then there is the post-test that basically it's the um, SUS questionnaire that we have seen yesterday. So 10 questions, like a scale one to five, and et cetera. And then they have other appendix to do other things. So this is a pretty comprehensive um, uh, script plus planning that can be absolutely used uh, as an example. There are also other parts that we didn't cover or that are maybe not always common, but this is probably again a, a document that this company made for the better world book. So the better world book say, please do this evaluation testing for me. And they are uh, obviously have to set up a series of documents for the main company. So this is just a big introduction. Let's try to contextualize all these things, some of these things um, here. So we would like to do a usability testing of Discord. So let's imagine that Discord tell us, please do a usability testing of our platform. So the first thing that we have to decide is, we are going to skip some parts in this in this description, like uh, which I which is which is uh, our role. We can skip this this smaller part and focus on the main uh, on the main part. So uh, who are we are going to um, let's put here here. So participant. Who are our participant? Who is the target user? So you, you, some of you at least use Discord, who is the intended target user? Or the target user that you want to consider in this example? So we have a bunch of answer, group of friends, students, colleagues, any other? So Discord, if I'm gamers, yeah, if I'm correct, Discord was born for gamers. Now it's used, obviously everybody can use it, also if you are not gamers, uh, probably, if, in the beginning, at least, Discord that was targeting for gamers, and we can choose I, I, uh, among these options. All, all of them are quite uh, quite good, uh, quite big, a little bit generic. So, uh, group of friends hanging out using Discord for doing what? 
students, again, using Discord for doing what? Uh, colleagues, same as before. Gamers, it's the, the intended target population of Discord, obviously. Uh, but for, for doing what? Um, so let's pick, oh, okay. Let's pick, uh, this is just an example. So we can uh, actually imagine the answer that we prefer, but I will get with the, the last one that we have in chat. So multiplayer, gamers uh, that want to cooperate in a specific game, I, I suppose. Not in general, in general. Perfect. And let's characterize them a bit. See, something similar to what we, what you did here with this target group and to what they also are did here in the, um, in the profile. Some of these. So do we want, uh, so let's imagine age. Are we interested in age? These gamers, multiplayer gamers, should be young, should be, we don't care. Okay, so let's pick the, the, the two option there. Uh, the, the, 1530. So we are interested in gamers that are in that specific age. Uh, we are interested in the expertise with games or not. And we will do this part quickly because it's you, you should be able to, to, to do this uh, from the need finding phase. But just to give some indication because the task could be different according to who we are going to uh, to have in mind to, to evaluate our system. Expertise with games in general. Uh, maybe we are interested, maybe not. Expertise with Discord. And expertise, and while I write, think what we can write after the column. Expertise with uh, chat-based system application. So do, well, are we interested in the expertise with games and which games? So one option is maybe, uh, I'm writing here just not to forget since there are many answer, maybe, oh, there is uh, 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 an answer to my, uh, an additional answer and here, it's, I think it's no. So this is one option. Um, so let's speak about games. Probably it's not important. Okay, um, it seems reasonable, but do we want to include people that never played a, multi -game, a multiplayer game in uh, his life or her life? Okay, so expertise with games is maybe not relevant, uh, but let's say uh, like, like they did here. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Something similar to this, use computer daily, or let's say played a multiplayer game. So just to have people that know what they are speaking about. And, and then it's reflecting specifically the population. Uh, expertise with Discord. We want expertise with Discord or not? This is to me crucial because we are uh, including or excluding some task and possible feature. Because if I am already expert with Discord, maybe I could focus more on some advanced tasks. So Discord is pretty complex, a lot of function, a lot of feature, and we are going to generate, let's say five to 10 tasks. And we cannot cover all 
the feature of, the, of Discord and all the main feature of Discord in five, 10 tasks. We will cover just a subset. So choosing on the expertise will include or exclude some tasks, obviously. So if you are not expert, you can start from the beginning, from the creation of the server and going on. If you're an expert, maybe you can focus, you can skip some more basic task or maybe just have one task for the basic operation and focus more on the moderate to uh, complex operation. So we have a yes from before, we have a no from now, we have to at least a third person that give another option. So we can have a consensus. So uh, could we have some level of experience? We can, what, what do you mean for level of experience? Uh, think, so the, what you are writing in the chat is beginner, intermediate, as level experience. Uh, we can, uh, and this generates, however, two problems. Uh, one problem is that if we have two separate groups like the beginner and the expert, uh, we could also think to do two separate usability testing. So the same usability testing or more or less the same usability testing, subministered to two groups and see if the two groups have different behavior. So maybe something is better from beginner and something is different from expert. And this is one choice. And the other choice is to mix people together. And it is possible. So we have a quite a, a large range, probably five participants in this case are not enough because we are enlarging to match the, the level of expertise and expectation of the software. Um, so we have to consider this when we are going to create the, the task and we are choosing what to do. Um, and the other problem, problem, the characteristic of this uh, level of expertise uh, is that we need something to, let's say, classify that one is beginner and the other one is intermediate and the other one is expert because we need to recruit these people. So we get a bunch of people in this age, 15, 30 years old, that play the multiplayer game. So let's imagine a questioner like the one in the script that we have seen. Are you, which is your age? Okay, it's in this range, perfect. Next question. You are 35 years old, goodbye. Uh, have you ever played a multiplayer gamer? Yes, no. Yes, next question, no. Thank you very much. See you next time. Which is your expertise with Discord? Here, which are the criteria to selecting people? Beginner, intermediate and expert, it's too big. You. I could define myself a beginner and, and I am, uh, absolutely. Um, but maybe other people could define themselves a beginner, but they are intermediate or quite expert or an expert could, in reality is a beginner. So it's a little bit big you for a criteria for selecting people. So we can define levels, but in a precise way because we are choosing who are we are recruiting. So now for simplicity, so you can, you have to consider all of these if you want to have a larger experience, but now for uh, experience, we say no. So let's say never open it Discord uh, or just used one, two times for a few moments. Yes, instead of levels, so one way to, to see level of expertise could be about month of experience. So the, the point is giving in this, in this selection phase, some actionable criteria. Okay, then we can call it experience with this expertise with Discord. And it's like, okay, for us, the expertise with Discord is people that have three months of experience uh, using Discord or is people between three to six months of experience or zero from two, three months, but it should be something actionable, something clear that you can say, yes, like 
are you 15 to 30 years old? Yes, no, something that is quite clear and can proceed from one question to another for selecting the person, the people that you are interested in. So for now, just for, create, for keeping things simple, just say, no, we don't want, we want novice user. So that never heard about Discord or just use one, two times for a few moments, or we can even simplify and say, okay, never open Discord before. Um, expertise with other chat-based application. Are we interested in this and, or not? And, and what this will change in our participant, in our study? Just to know this, or if you are choosing something specific. So I never use Discord. So I am in this range. I played multiplayer games at least one. Uh, I never use Discord at now. I have expertise with WhatsApp, Slack, Teams, just name one or not. And why it's important to decide. But again, uh, the, quest, the, the message is maybe a little bit so they can have a mental model. So you, you are more saying yes. And again, we have a no and we have a yes, and we need to decide. So actually it's not to compare because we cannot say that we cannot actually compare these. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that the messages in the chat are more or less on the, on the right path. Uh, if we, so why it's important to ask because if we know that they have expertise and how much expertise measured in some way with other chat-based application, we know that they are some expectation. They already formed, uh, as somebody brought in the chat, a mental model. They already expect to have messages, to send messages in a way, to maybe mention people using a, a specific charter or to have notifications. So they have some expectation about what Discord will do. So never use Discord, but they are imagining how it works. So this is if you are, so this is just for asking if we want. So it's important to say we want these people because we need to decide. And if you decide yes, we have to consider in our results that these people open Discord with some, uh, some of these people may open Discord with some, uh, with, this, with a specific mental model of, of how, what a chat based system will do and which are the shortcut in, the, in that, in those chat based system and how they work, what the, the options are there. So they will probably, they will say, okay, this is something different from Slack. I appreciate more these, I appreciate more in Slack, I appreciate more in WhatsApp, etc. So this is a specific choice in the recruiting that has an impact on the results. Vice versa, if we want to exclude people with chat-based application, it will be a little bit more difficult to recruit people probably that never used any chat-based application, um, nowadays at least. Uh, but uh, um, they, we, we don't know. They are not big expectation about Discord because they never use something like this. So let's put here, yes, and we should also ask which, uh, because it could be interesting to know in the results, to read the results, knowing that uh, maybe people that use Slack were able to complete or not complete some task in a certain way. And instead of people who use Telegram, um, that don't have channels like Discord has, uh, could have different uh, perspective and this different expectation. So it could be interesting to, to know this. So which, um, but they should have some expertise. Yeah, obviously it's, uh, I, I read this in the chat only now, sorry. Yes, it's very difficult now to find someone that doesn't have any experience at all with any chat application. So we are including that also it's easier for us. Uh, 
let's add that then you can continue like you you did for the need find you can continue to have this long list for probably half page that just let's add one that is again important suggestion i have one in mind that is important but As a criteria of even people. Any clue? A suggestion. Discord is available, I think, for computers, for smartphone, um, and probably stop. Um, so for mobile mobile devices and desktop and laptops, do you want to test Discord on the smartphone with people that never use a smartphone? Do you want to uh, test Discord on a computer with people that only use a smartphone? So obviously we, we would like to test the desktop application. So in a way, uh, and then the games, where well, some games are on desktop also. Uh, but yeah, we, we would like to expert, let's say expertise, so usage of computer. So we would like to have people that are using computers. We are going to exclude people that never used computer up to this moment. So maybe they played on the PlayStation, and use Discord on the smartphone or they played some uh, Google Strava, uh, Strava is, no, it's not called Strava, Stadia, uh, games or some iOS uh, games that are maybe multiplayer, but never use a computer. We, want, we don't want to include these people. We want people that uses the computer and that uh, uses chat base app. And then maybe they can also use smartphone, but primarily uh, they're using the computer. Mm -hmm primarily users for, since we have considering expertise, we can also say right here from a users for chat based app. And we are restricting. So if I am an expert uh, on only using uh, mobile apps on, oh yeah, on smartphones, then it could be difficult to, to, have, to, to be in this study. But again, these are choices that you made and that impact either the, both the task that you're going to select and the analysis of the results, because you, have, you can have different perspective if you select some people and other people. Um, so usage of computer prim primary use, primary usage for chat based app and games. Uh, so I think this is interesting uh, for depth in the chat for desktop user, uh, but also laptop actually, user should have a microphone or webcam. Uh, obviously in the laptop is in integrated, but this is something that we want to, that we are interested in. So if they have a, a microphone or a webcam, and why we are interested in selecting people with a microphone or webcam on the computer for the usability testing, not in general for their life. Exactly. So if you are doing uh, usability testing in person, we are going to provide the computer with Discord. So obviously our equipment should have a webcam and a microphone. And we can put here like equipment, we can start Again, drafting a bit of this session. This is hidden tree. Equipment, we need a computer with microphone and webcam. Uh, internet connection. Discord installed. Um, well, 
okay, these are things. So I, I've seen the comments and I'd like to clarify one thing. Uh, so these are, then we can continue, but let's stop here. This is the same process that you have done again for the finding. So you, you should be familiar with. And we also have only half an hour and would like to, to write with you a, a few tasks at least. Then we can have, obviously we will have the role, who is doing the facilitator, who is doing the note taker, et cetera. The equipment. So we need for sure a microphone with computer webcam. We need an internet connection, otherwise Discord won't work. We need Discord installed on the computer. Uh, here we have to decide if we want to have uh, the uh, audio recording, video recording. So let's put here in parentheses. Let's not focus on this audio recording. So it, it's an option that could be there. Uh, and then in the chat, there is a copy of the game. Are we really interested in having the game running in our study of Discord? I don't think so. So why we, do we need a copy of the game? So obviously we will have one person using Discord in that moment. So there is no cooperation. There is no interaction with another person and probably we don't need the game. Yeah, user Discord is used while gaming, but we are not doing a in the wild observation of Discord. We are doing a user bit testing of Discord. I don't know if we are interested. This is part of the task. Uh, so the comments is, so we are interested in the sub set setup part. Probably we can add some task about the setup but we can also have some task about just the message. So the capability, again, we are not observing how people use Discord. This is observation. Another thing, this is usability testing. We would like to see the usability of the Discord as an application. So for supporting this, the cooperation, how do you support the cooperation? You support the cooperation with probably audio channel and seeing how the user, if the user is able to produce a voice message, written messages. So if the user is able to write something, if, if the user is able to uh, react to notification, to mention another person. So the usability of the application per se, the functionality the application is providing. Then you can also have a video game in the ground, but it's just noise. It's just more context, so, but it's not, again, strictly a focus on this. Just to be clear, we are investigating, don't forget, we are investigating Discord and the usability of Discord as an application, as an application with this specific set of people and uh, Discord on a computer, not on a smartphone, on a computer. Uh, so equipment, and then you can continue obviously with equipment if you if you want. Um, obviously, we are imagining all, all of these um, in person. Um, The number of participants, we already said that we are oriented to our, around five participants that we have seen that are enough. Uh, then, oh, let's put here in the equipment. Uh, do we want some questionnaire? And which? So let's say, do we want a pre-test questionnaire or not? How they call it here? Artifact. Let's use the same artifact. So let's say that we want a pre test questionnaire and and a post test question. We, we don't have the recruiting, maybe we don't have the recruit. So the quest, the comment in chat is, uh, we we have the recruiting questionnaire instead of the pre-test. Maybe we don't have the recruiting, the, the recruiting questionnaire. And maybe we're just recruiting these people asking, yeah, we have a, some question in mind or some question on paper that we are asking to recruit these people, but maybe we are interested in uh, more information 
uh, like this which could be actually a question here in the pretest questionnaire and for recruiting we just want to know if they are using or not application so some of these could be also moved in the some question that stem from this part could be also used in the pretest questionnaire to better understand and to also have track uh, uh, tracking all of these and then we will have probably a post test questionnaire i will skip post task questionnaires because they are quite boring and always not a lot useful uh, and maybe we can use SUS here just for uh, simplicity and then we will have in, a, in the end of this document as in the template in the document that we have seen we will have a page with the pretest questionnaire another page with the post test questionnaire so that you can in an in-person setting you can print them out and hand it to the to the participant uh, and we will also have obviously the informed contest, um, the informed uh, consensus document, and uh, mm, mm, what else? Um, well, if we have a video and audio recording, maybe we need to, to ask the permission, but we didn't decide to have that. Um, okay. Then typically what you have is a matrix section, a task session, section, and then a script where, so let's put before tasks. You write which are the tasks that you are going to ask people to do and then you summarize the matrix and you write the script. So the script is again, is something like, hi, name of the participant. I am name of the facilitator. And today, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just the script of the, of the study. So we have the introduction and then you have at a certain point, uh, uh, please fill out these questionnaires, this uh, document for giving us permission to blah, 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 before starting the session uh, and then other word and then uh, Handling the pretest questionnaire. So this is actually both of what you are, the action that you are going to do, and the test the text, the specific word that you are going to say during the uh, session, during each session. And then you have tasks that are probably the most important part here that they would like to focus on. Um, so let's add a table. Like this. So, so typically it's a good idea to enumerate task. Task one, task two, task three, task four, task five, task six. And because in the results, in the analysis, and also in the reminder of the of the of, of the script of the protocol, uh, you can say, okay, this is for task one. Task three has these success criteria, and so on. So it's it's quite useful to have a list of task number here. Then let's add a row, which say number of the task and say this text of the task, and we can say. Uh, success criteria and we can say let's add the one column on the right and it's um, methodology so uh, one second uh, so uh, so this is, again, this is not something that you have in this, in this document for the task because they added these scenarios, 
uh, but more or less this is something that you typically want to have in a in a table in a usability testing so the test of the task what you are going to, to say to the user any success failure criteria things that you accept as successful and if you are applying some methodology so this task is think allowed all this task is think allowed some notes also that you may have related to this task but the most important is success criteria or which you are considering error or not errors not only for you as facilitator and yes you can also have uh, expected time but it could be a success criteria uh, for instance um so you can do also other columns just let's pick these four that are probably the most uh, common uh, commonly used um so task so we need to select five tasks so in the chat uh, you have you reported some tasks uh, so for instance, one task could be, according to you, add a friend, another call your friend, another join a lobby of a game with your friend while talking to him. Uh, another suggestion of a task are enter in a group, send a text message, join a conversation, creating channel. These are not good tasks. These are poor tasks, all of them, for different reasons. Again, for, don't forget this. No, I've closed that, I think. Don't forget this. Task should be um, realistic. So with some detail, add a friend is too generic, typically. Which friend? You are ending out the application to a user that never used Discord before. So probably they don't know which is the friend to add. And you want to understand if they are doing probably the action of adding a friend in, the, in, the, in a, the right way, in a precise way. And then make the task actionable. Use the website to find a movie or to, you're interested to seeing on a specific moment and avoid giving clue and describing the step. So enter in a group test. So if they, they could be separate, obviously task, but uh, send a text message could be maybe reasonable, but let's say which test message. Also because maybe you have Task number three, that is send a text message, and task number four, that build upon that task, that continue after. So if you are specific and you say send a text message, greeting another user or mentioning another user, you are both evaluating the task per se, and you are also evaluating some feature that the task has, uh, and uh, you can build upon that in the next, uh, next step. Uh, react or reply to the last message in the channel it's bad be it's better as a task yes i agree because it's actionable um and then react or reply however react or reply is it better again probably not perfect because a react or reply which is the success criteria and which are which are topic that you're interested in you are interested in direction or interested in replying so if all the participant in a react or reply just react you never explore the reply part so again, more focus, concrete steps. Uh, but, and then you started, and it's reasonable, you started from a server already created for most of the task at least. Uh, and you can also have instead, if you want, this is again, uh, it depends on what you want to, to, to understand uh, the usability. You can also have include the creation of the server. So you are you using an existing server, you want to have a task about the creation of the server. So all the tasks that you have written were about um, um, with, with a server already created. I, 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 I lost a message, join a channel with at least five other people could be good. Could be good an example because it's finding a channel or joining a channel. Um, any channel again depends on what you are interested in so if you have because you set up discord before this so you know what you are going to do so if you have a, a channel in which there are two channels in which there are other five people and one is a textual channel one is a voice channel it's the same if the user joined the channel one of these two kind of channel or not if it's the same the description join a channel 
with at least five other people, it's great because you obtain the results and, and you don't care if it's a voice channel or textual channel. If you're interested instead in evaluating something more about the voice or about the text, or if the next task will be now send a text message, this is problematic because the user is in a channel that is voice based, so you cannot send a text message. So this needs to be also figured out together. But all the indication that we have here is skip the setup part. So I'm just creating a, a test. Um, I will use one of these since we have some channel created. I have no idea what this checkbox here means. I'm not. Uh, um, I'm not activating these. Um, okay. So let's imagine that we, this is what we started from. An empty channel, maybe if you want with other people, other random people. So this is what the user is saying, is seeing at the beginning. Uh, Discord server with some voice, three voice channel, uh, four text channel and two other channel grouped under information and with this specific name. So if you want to send the user in a specific channel, you can. You can say, send a message in the session planning channel. Okay, this is a bad example actually, because you say that it's for gaming. Um, so let's create, there is one for gaming, yes. Um, so let me delete these. Oops. Um, Okay. Um, okay. Gaming. Okay, so gaming, we can start from these in which we have these two text channel and these two voice channel. So a little bit less structured before, but you can obviously, uh, use a different starting point in the usability evaluation. We can start with this. And um, so we are here uh, a first, so this is the first task. So we can ask hmm, here in the script, fill out the permission ending the pretest, and we say, uh, this is something common. Uh, now uh, have a look and hmm, explore Discord for X minutes. Let's say two, three minutes. So a free exploration just to get the user familiar of the structure of this code. They, they never seen this code before. So it's, it's a good idea to have this exploratory task just to get them uh, some familiarity with the interface, with the option, where they are things so that it's easier to find things in a probably uh, optionally, uh, hopefully it's easier to find things uh, and in a second moment. And this could be a formal task or it could be just like ending the questionnaire. Now you have three minutes, five minutes of free exploration of the task. So let's say three minutes. Uh, and then after this, you have task one. Task one. So. You have the user logged in here, seeing this page, maybe he clicked here, he clicked here, he clicked here, and then he go back here and he, he does something, maybe he clicked here, and then he clicked here, just, just an exploration of, of the, and see what happened, um, disconnect. Um, so maybe he also click disconnect or maybe not. So you don't know exactly the state, but more or less, it will be this. If you are allowing for a free exploration where people can click somewhere, if you are allowing for an exploration where people just is looking without clicking, you have to say that, and it's reasonable to say that, but uh, you have to, be uh, have, has to be specific. So starting from here, this is the beginning, which is the first task that we are going to, to tell the user to do. So let me put here this one, this is join. Uh, 
channel with at least five other people. And here you can decide if it's text, voice. Oh, I don't care. So the first task that Andre is suggesting is invite some friends. So this is not web specific. So you can either just write the task or maybe uh, providing a short scenario like in the other example. So, okay, you are, so this is Discord, you are playing the game X and uh, with other uh, friends and you are setting up, you are, have set up Discord for keeping the communication with these, these people. And these are all things that you have to write in the in the task, in the, in the script, so here probably, or just before the task, if, the, if this scenario change a bit among the task. And uh, so after setting up Discord, the first thing you need to do is to invite some friend. So now invite, uh, invite the, your friend, let's say uh, Andrea, since the suggestion is yours. Uh, and so uh, you, as creator of the usability test, you have to, to check how this is possible. So I think, I don't know, but I think that they have to press here and uh, I can look here for Andrea and I am expecting probably to find the user here. So you are expected to, to put together this in a way that it, it works. So in my case, I, I don't have anybody on Discord that's called Andrea that probably it's here, but, um, but yeah, I, I, for instance, I have one that's called David in this case. So I can click on invite. But if it is a task that you have in mind, so opening this, click invite, be sure that it's possible to do this just to check if, and then you can check if the user is clicking here, is searching here, is copying the link and sending it to Andrea or whatever is the, fr the friend. So uh, check that the task is possible and that you are not missing any steps or any detail, more than steps, any details in the test description, but it's fine. Um, so let's say Andrea with the question mark, this, because maybe this is the name of the friend and which is the success criteria, which are you accepting for uh, success of this? So the user, the participant is able to invite the user named Andrea. And maybe here you can also write, uh, it's acceptable that um, he shared invites with another user and the task is not successfully completed, only 90% uh, completed. It's an option, you can imagine this because you, maybe you are just interested to have the person in uh, the application. Um, and also here, this task should not last longer than five minutes. So if after five minutes, the user is not able to invite Andrea, you are saying that you are stopping it. This is it's not mandatory. This is not mandatory, but for some tasks could be useful and the methodology none. Uh, let's write another task then it's, it's time, the time is over. I have seen a bunch of that. Yes. Write something in a text channel, join a voice channel, enter the server X and check it online user in the status. So enter the server X is interesting. And then I will comment a bit the other two. Um, it's interesting, but pay attention that I cannot, I, I don't want to open this in, while I'm video recording and with a video public on the internet, on the internet. but yeah. Um, these enter several X and check it online users as some characteristics. I'm not saying that it's not good. It could be a, an option. You have obviously Discord as I said before is very big and a lot of features you have to, show, to choose what you are interested in, which are the main feature that you are interested. For sure, you are interested in writing a channel, in a channel, 
joining a channel, uh, looking for friends, for sure these are the main feature inside a server that you are interested. Then you maybe are also interested in that and you are considering that joining a different server is priority for you. I don't think that this case, in this case, is, is a priority, but it may be. Uh, and the problem with this task, as is written, uh, enter the server X is fine. Uh, check the online users and the status also is fine. Uh, it's, you have to specify best in, in a good way, which are the success criteria, because I can enter the server X by clicking here, or I can enter the server X by looking at in the explore public servers. So probably this enter is not specific enough. Um, or, or maybe I'm accepting both of them and then obviously I, uh, I can. Uh, so if, if I have entered the WIST 2020 server as a task and then clicking here, this maybe is a non-critical errors and I can count these as non-critical error. Uh, the other task, uh, write something in a text channel, join a voice channel, I, I like it. So join a, uh, more than a voice channel. Yeah, I could be more voice channel. And then you have to have the success criteria as before. And maybe here you say, okay, I would like to do this with the thing allowed. So what the user is doing for joining a voice channel and uh, uh, write something at this channel. Again, it's a little bit not specific. So write, uh, could be a write, uh, a welcome message uh, to Andrea in the, in the uh, general channel or better, send a welcome message to Andre in the general channel. And probably this should come before the other. Because if your user invited the friend and joined the voice channel and then have to send a channel, it changed channel. Uh, and it's it's possible, just a, a choice. Uh, another option is invite a friend, send a welcome message, and then join a channel. And here, success criteria. Uh, so, success criteria. This task would be uh, successful in two ways to me, one is perfect and one is not. So if I read the description, uh, I mean uh, that I could say, I, Andrea. And this is completing the task because I send a welcome message to Andrea in the general channel. Hopefully I am in the general channel, yes. Uh, another way could be hi at, uh, okay, Andrea, let's imagine that Andrea is a user. So let's mention myself. This is equivalent, obviously, but I am also exploring these. So which are interested? I am interested in the first one, the second one. This could be a speci specified in the channel, so in the test, like mentioning Andrea or, or just being acceptable both answer. Um, Uh, so in this case, how can we do a task to test the reply functionality? Well, I don't know which is the reply functionality here, but um, here. Yeah, in this case, uh, it's acceptable because it's called the reply and then you cannot, so either you think a way to say reply without saying reply, that is could be great, but I don't, I, it don't, doesn't come to my mind another word for replying. Uh, answer to specific comment to the to the message to the Andreas message in the clip and the light channel uh, with your opinion, um, and this is a, a, a reply. But again, as in this case, you are accepting in the reply case. You should decide if you are accepting that the user is clicking here and press reply and say hi, hello. 
or just write hello in the channel. And it's up to you. So it partially it's up to you, partially it's part of visibility. So if no user is able to locate that they have to click here and press reply, but just right here, probably it's a usability problem. Who knows? But the goal of usability testing is to understand this thing. So if nobody is going to use the reply, probably the reply function is too hidden. So it's fine. It's something that you may maybe want to discover. And then we stop, but there is another uh, uh, attach dog photo to a text channel of a server. Again, attack, uh, attach a dog photo could be a, a good task. Uh, you have to provide the, the dog photo somewhere, obviously on the computer that you are providing for the user testing. To a text channel could be again, good because the user can select one of the channels they want. Of a server is generic, which server? Uh, in, the, in the server that you are, so you cannot you you can skip the on a server, or if you want the user go on a specific server and then send the channel, and then select the channels and the photo. So be a little bit more specific and maybe contextualize and contextualize better. Attach your dog photo uh, to the. So let's imagine that there is a, a pet channel. I don't know if there is a pet channel in the in a game. Uh, server but let's imagine that there is uh, let's call it uh, not pet like uh, so maybe not a dog photo because it's not well contextualized with the specific topic that is gaming but um, uh, character like favorite character and so it could be um, it could be a uh, send uh, the picture of your favorite game character uh, in the uh, most suitable channel. And so you are looking at if the user is the participant is able to check which is the most suitable channel and upload the, the, the picture uh, that you have provided in the computer here. So these, all this thinking should be repeated for let's say no more around no more than around 10 tasks uh, with specifying the criteria, specifying the methodology, a criteria for stopping, and then in the matrix, if you want to measure time for each task, time spent for each task, and number of non-critical errors, and maybe not for all tasks, but only for tasks T2, T6, or for every task, it's it's up to you. It's again, you are you want to discover some usability problem, some usability issue. If there are uh, for in this case on Discord for people that are gamers that cooperate in a specific game, so. Contextualize better these, give the details that are needed. Don't suggest how to do things. So this is obviously incomplete, but just to give you an idea of type of the kind of reasoning that you have to do. And this code is obviously much more complex than your prototype. So, and you know your prototype better than this. So it should be easier to, um, to, to, to do this operation for you. Again, the goal is catching, getting feedback, catching the problems of your application while experimenting the main task, the main operation of the application. Let me fix this in also two or uh, mentioning so that you can either be generic and accepting uh, this or be more specific because you are interested in this. Again, choices according to you what to, to, to do. And then also saying mentioning, you can consider acceptable and partially completed the task that has high uh, without the mention. So this is to give uh, an idea. Then you have uh, all these example here in this browser are example of scripts and you can, I'm sure that if you look for usability testing example, you will find tons of other example, but more or less they are on the same uh, tone as this. So 
now it's 1 p.m. Uh, at five minutes after 1 p.m. So we really need to stop here. Um, so I will stop the recording. If you have any other few questions in the chat, you can right now. Otherwise, we will meet tomorrow in the lab for other supervised uh, work group about your um, prototype in code.